YouTube. I'm Aaron in my pajamas. We're on day Four, a bunch. Five, six, seven? Six, I think we're five. almost halfway. Yeah, we got to be. Of <laughs> Drift Week 7. I did a bunch of laps with Nakamura today and yesterday and the day before. It was a lot of fun. And this is Taylor Ray. And I'm about to give him a subject that we're going to chat about. But how's everything going on Drift Week? Everything is good, fortunately. Good. We had our struggles before Drift Week started, which I... With the struggles, was hoping that that's, you know, sometimes it works out like that. Like, you fight to get there, and then everything works perfect. Mm -hmm. Not going to say everything's working perfect. Knock on wood. But it's, it's working good. pretty well. It's been good. I haven't had to mess with it since yeah. then. So I'm happy. And you feel like a baller out there in your F80 M3? It is pretty nice on days like today mm -hmm. when it's, like, freezing and windy to have a heated, heated seat. seat. Literally, I'm drifting <laughs> with the heated seat on. It's amazing. I was sitting in my car running grid today, and I'm like, <laughs> I have to remind myself it's cold outside because I'm like super comfortable yeah. inside, and I see everything blowing across, and yeah. it was like hurricane today. It was very, very windy. It was cold. Do you like the car, by the way? I do. Okay, I good. do like it. It's definitely like track like that. You're like, man, an SR like rattle can 240 would be amazing right now, but it's like you got to make a compromise somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, do you want to be comfortable on the street? Do you want enough power to drift big tracks, or do you want a car to be nimble? Like. You can't have it all. I must say, someone like yourself probably keeps building similar things in similar veins of like, you know, your Miata is a V8 thing, little comp car, whatever your Corvette is. This makes you build something so different doing Drift Week. Right. Like off the wall, like you would never build a drift car like this normally for your OSW skid pad and all this right. stuff. And then you obviously, like, you've probably drifted more laps in this F80 already than your Corvette. Or no. I don't know. I did a lot of laps in my Corvette, but probably similar, yeah. By the end of the trip, it'll be more. For sure. So, sure. okay, so real quickly, did you want to do your own topic or you want me to do it? I, I see I blanked out on all my topics. I feel like I thought about topics spot. because I'm like, Aaron's probably going to want to do an interview with me. Mm -hmm. And I've, I feel like I have topics. None. None come to mind. What is the last topic we did together? Uh, something about making a living off YouTube. It was Before. YouTube changed his life. <laughs> oh, that's so I want to do a, an update video. Oh, so this God. is YouTube changes <laughs> life more. No. So going back. <laughs> You, you still have a chance to opt out. And I don't know what. I don't no, know. he has to do this now. So, <laughs> so last time we did it, I remember the thumbnail. I think we were at Formula D Texas, and we made this video. And maybe no, it, was it wasn't like, even FD Texas. It was the second round I did of Lone Star in the Miata, because it was it was, was TMS. It? Yeah, because I had done Police Academy, like, and then I went to the next round, which was TMS, because everyone said I couldn't win. A TMS and Miata, because everyone said I only won. You can't win in a V8 Miata. Well, everyone said the Police Academy I only won because small car, small track. Mm -hmm. now, there's no way you'll win at TMS. So I went to TMS. And you won? I did. Congratulations. But it was after that. Good. You're a little rocket ship in that Miata. That thing's not an underdog. It made 350 underdog. wheel back then. And it's 2,200 2,500 uh, well, without me fault. in it. God. A lot. It's 27 with me. Well, it seems like it's the cheap car that's like <laughs> super light and all these things on little tires. But it does work well. I'm not saying it doesn't. It won the events. It did. It, it did amazing. You ever win a clutch kickers round in it? Mm -hmm. or do, see, there you go. It's not an underdog car. I know. By the way, on that old clutch kickers track, I thought your car was actually a cheater car because you could transition so fast. Because yeah, like when I drove that car track, it was just like <laughs> it is a back lot. and forth. But I will say, for whatever reason, the way my Miata was set up like it if you were at any bit of like a lot of angle like if you were at a very shallow angle it would transition very quickly mm -hmm. but if you got to a decent bit of angle it would take forever to transition mm -hmm. it really didn't transition that fast weird yeah I don't know what it was I mean it made it easier to drive like I think people always thought that it would must be twitchy mm -hmm. but it was kind of the opposite like it was kind of dull I feel like an S chassis is snappier than the Miata was the way it was set up that's really weird I know it is huh. weird Especially if you go to a lot of angle. Like if you go to a lot of angle and chase, you're screwed. Because like you just, it takes so long to get it to, to unwind and start transitioning. Like you'll be like, all right, that guy's transitioning. And you're like, go! You're like stomping <laughs> the brakes. That happened to me chasing Chelsea. It was terrible. I was just watching him drive away. So I'm like, come on, go the other way. Excuses. That excuses. was an excuse. But that is what happened. Chelsea's fast, though. Hey, when I was with him, it was fine. I mean, yeah. that was just, I, I screwed up that weekend. I didn't do any chase practice. The only chase lap I did was following Wicknick, and I hit him. But you know what you did is you succeeded that weekend at YouTube because you were consistent, and you did it, and the audience liked it, 
even though they don't watch the driving videos as much as <laughs> they, the build videos. They don't videos. watch the driving videos, that's the problem. But let's go back to that original day when we were doing that. I thought that you were just like on a big rise and then if you're gonna keep with it, because YouTube was already changing your life where lots of guys in my series were your fans, you know, mm -hmm. watching. Um, I think that you thought yourself, you probably weren't making a lot of money yet. Right. You didn't have crazy projects. You still didn't have a home at that point, did you? Like a no, house? No, no, I hadn't bought a house yet. Um, you know, I kind of remember you probably not being super confident about your place in life and stuff. And a lot of that stuff kind of seems to have changed now. You've been consistent yeah. with your YouTube. You're doing almost half as many views per video as like Adam. Yeah, it's that's a good point. Which I means think you about have at least half as much then. money as Adam. No, see, that is not <laughs> how it works. Dude, there's other people that get way less, like less views than me, and they've got like, like this crazy house. They got like 50 cars, and I'm like, man, I don't really understand. You I think people people push the merch harder than I do. I barely push yeah. the merch, which I, is bad. But you're right. A lot has changed since then. Got to push that clash of clans or what is it? Shadow <laughs> Legacy? No, Shadow, Shadow <laughs> Legends. Shadow Raid, Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. There you go. That's the one, dude. There's so many. Every day I get an email from some game company, mm -hmm. and it's always like some like legitimate sounding title, like so and so from unorthodox corporation and mm -hmm. you're like oh this must be some other thing it's like we want you we have a great opportunity for you we have this phone game we want you to promote <laughs> and we know your fans are gonna love it <laughs> and you need to talk about it for two minutes straight with I'm a like, straight nope. face and no. pretend you're playing it no nope, i'm having it. such a great okay but back to the real topic but now you have multiple drift cars cool projects fancy tow rig fancy house big workshop yep. successful channel you have two F80 M3s. Can you see personally how far you've come that yeah, fast? Or no, is it, it such is. a slow process? It doesn't hit you and you're like, doink. Yeah, I would say there's, there's that. And then there's like, you know, I, I was trying to save a lot of money and then I just like balled out all at one time. So it seems like things like jumped up, but they've been pretty, pretty static. But getting my house is when things really went up a lot. I would say mm -hmm. like my views doubled like when I went and got my own house, which mm -hmm. I didn't see that coming. So that was nice. Why is that? I don't, I just think like maybe, I don't know, me having my own work environment and you know, my own shop and people like the shop and the house stuff. Mm -hmm. People like that stuff more than the car stuff, which I get it cause like I kind of do too, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, I guess more relatable. Like if you're, you're watching a car build series, you have to kind of be into that car or at least what that car is going to do. If you're not into either of those, who cares? But like everyone needs a shop. Everyone needs a truck, a trailer. Mm -hmm. So like all that stuff's always done better for me than the car stuff. And I guess probably because a lot of the other YouTubers like me don't cover that stuff. They're like, oh, it's just a truck. It's just a trailer. Mm -hmm. But like I like my truck and trailer as much as I like my cars. You know, like I just like trucks mm -hmm. and trailers. I don't know why, but I do. So, um, but yeah, no, it is, it is pretty crazy. It's crazy how much I, like you kind of have to, I thought about this the other day, like how much things have stepped up on YouTube you know, like in the sense that three years ago, I could get by like building, like I put together like this FCRX7 project that was unfinished and it was fine. Like people watched it. It wasn't the best viewed content on my channel, but like it was fine. Whereas now it's like doing projects that two, three years ago would have been like the best on my channel, like are don't do well because like everyone stepped content up so much. You know, there's so many crazy builds happening and it's like, it's kind of hard to keep up with that, which I don't really try to. I like to build stuff I want to build. Mm -hmm. But the hard part with that is like, I don't like having a ton of cars. I don't like having cars that I don't drive, you know? And I don't like not being able to drive cars. Like I had built my turbo truck and it's literally just sitting in my yard. And like the squirrels are getting to the wiring and stuff, you know, like, like there's the spark plug boots got squirrel chew marks on it. Mm -hmm. And it runs and drives, you know, it's just like, I start working on another car. I'm excited about driving that. I got the F80 and like, so anyway, my point is if I only build what I want to build, I'll never get rid of anything, you know? Cause I'm like, I like this. I built this cause I like it. Um, but yeah, it's like definitely have to spend a lot more money now. Mm -hmm. And like years ago, I, I would make like one video might be like, let's say maybe 30, 40% the amount of progress that I do in one video now. You know, like I'll film a video over two, three, four days. So I get enough like physical progress on the car done. But you think like progress costs money, like all those car parts cost money. So like it now costs me a lot more money per video to make than it did before. 
because I'm putting so much more progress into each video. And I, I, it's just a slow process that that happens. And you're like, holy cow, if I, if I made the videos I made three years ago, nobody would watch them. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. It's interesting. I'm just listening. Yeah. You're carrying it. <laughs> no, you're good. I, you're everybody good. always says I talk too much. No, so see, I'm a talk. talker. I am That's a good. talker. So, what specific ways has YouTube changed your life, would you say? Oh, I mean, pretty much every way possible. Mm -hmm. You know, before YouTube, I couldn't afford a drift car. I was... I, I had bought like several projects. Like I got like this 240 shell for like 200 bucks that was wrecked. I was like, I'm gonna build this. And at, at the time I was the guy who's like, did the math. I'm like, oh, like, I could swap this at car for five grand, LS swap it. Which like, you know how that goes. Like completely unfeasible. Not well, it's not gonna be five grand. Yeah, I'm like, I could sell this car and I could do it. But so I never did, I never did any of it. And mm -hmm. uh, it sucked cause I drifted. I started drifting when I was 17. And I drifted until I was like 20, 20 or so, 21. And then like, I had a string of like broken cars, like bought this car, broke, sold it, bought this car, broke. And I didn't drive much for like four or five years. And I was trying to get back into it, but I couldn't afford it. I was living in a house, splitting a four bedroom house with three people. My rent was like 300 bucks a month. You know, we had four car guys sharing a two car garage. And then with YouTube from there to here, like I went from, not being able to afford a drift car, sharing a two-car garage, you know, having a little tiny bedroom to a house, a shop, truck, trailer, drift car, everything. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, really in every every way. Like, when do you get your OnlyFans, girl? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? No. That's the next step. Is it? Is that Probably. a Probably, yeah. You be the YouTuber, she does that, y'all join together, y'all make a bunch of money, and y'all go do crazy make stuff. More money than me. But, so actually the OnlyFans thing was making me think of something um, you are one of the, like, automotive YouTubing has got to be, like, one of the harder parts of YouTubing. Yeah. Everything you do requires so much stuff, and, like, it's fun to become, like, the car builder, and you've got all these cars, and you've got all these projects, right. and you do all these things, but you're almost creating a lifestyle for yourself that constantly has to be fed with more stuff. More cars. More money, more cars, more expenses, more shop space, more everything. Yep. And does it, like... Have you thought about breaking out of that mold and doing something else? Have you thought about trying to rein it back in some way? Because like one thing I find with you is you're a car YouTuber that A, doesn't have to flex, B, doesn't have to have like crazy thumbnails, C, doesn't have to do insane stuff for attention. Like I see a lot of the attention, I don't know what you'd call it, like attention, con attention economy or something. Like right. the whistle and diesel guys are like, say right. Drift Games or somebody else. Drift Games is amazing at promoting themselves and getting really excited about stuff and hyping things. And right. you know, crazy thumbnails and everything is like, I totaled this or you know, right, same right. thing with Jimmy Oaks or Rudnick is really big on that. And all these people have all these different things. You're the very down to earth, like relatable YouTuber. And all like, I look at your thumbnails and it's just like a car. It's not like Taylor going, yeah, see, you know, I learned, crazy. I used to do that, yeah. and, like, it, I hated it. Like, it just yeah. wasn't me. Like, I was like, I'm just doing this because I have to. And then I just stopped, and it honestly works better not doing that. Because mm -hmm. you think, like, I think it, it probably attracts an older audience because, like, you kind of feel, like, as an adult, which, like, I'm an adult now. I'm about to turn 30. <laughs> uh, you, if you click on a video where someone's like this, and it's, like, all this great, like, you feel like, feels childish almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. I could be wrong about that. But uh, it's, it's honestly worked better to be just like, like I don't clickbait at all. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, car stuff's just not really clickbaitable. Like, crashing is one of the few things, blowing an engine up. But, like, people will clickbait, like, you know, they'll be putting Wisefab on their car, and they'll be like, you'll never believe how much angle this car has. And it's like, it's just, it's not exciting. It's not like... Is it between zero and 90? Because it's one of those numbers. <laughs> right. It's, it's somewhere, you know, it's, I don't know how to explain it. It's just most of the car stuff we do isn't really clickbaitable. Like, and I feel like you just make it too ambiguous, ambiguous, mm -hmm. if you try to clickbait it. So I just like tell people exactly what it is. This is like an F80 M3 Drift Week build. Yeah. They're kind of there for you at that point. They know who you are and they know what you're doing, all these different things. But um, I, I've learned that helps more with reaching new people than doing... Because if you do the clickbait stuff, they have to know you to care. Like, if if 
I crashed my 350Z, like that's only a big deal if you know who I am and you watch me already. Mm -hmm. If you don't watch me, you don't care who this random guy crashed his Z, why would I care? Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I feel like that almost boxes you in more to like your content only working for your fans. That's another thing that I learned and started doing. I started watching this guy, Andrew Camerata, um, and he, it's gonna sound so random, but he works on like, heavy equipment, skid steers, excavators, he does dirt work, he built this like container castle, but he'll make a video that's filmed over like five or six months. Like he'll buy a piece of equipment and like get the piece of equipment, fix some stuff, use it, break it, upgrade it, fix it, like all in one video, It'll be like an hour long video. Mm -hmm. And his title will be, I bought an excavator. Mm -hmm. You know, just like very nonchalant. And w what I learned I liked about his videos was that there was a start and there was an end. like. If he's buying an excavator, you know he's not going to, like, show you the excavator and be like, stay tuned for next time, we'll start it up, you know? Like, you, you're going to get some satisfaction. You're going to get, like, a closing, an end to whatever it is. And uh, so I've tried to do that, like, on a smaller scale. Like, I can't, I can't film a video for four months, you mm -hmm. know? But I try to plan my content out to where, like, all right, today, you know, I want to get the engine on, like the transmission on the engine, get it in the car, get everything mounted up so the drivetrain's in the car. And like, sometimes that might take me five days, sometimes it might take two. But instead of just filming for two days and saying like, wherever I got is where I got, like, all right, see you next time. Like I try to finish out whatever I'm doing. So mm -hmm. there's an end. And I feel like that's helped me a lot. And I think doing the little bit longer content or like at least more dense, content is better for your channel overall because I could probably make, get more monthly views if I posted more videos that were less dense, mm -hmm. right? Like I think each video would get less views, but there'd be more of them. But long term, if someone clicks on one of my videos, like there's a start, there's an end, stuff happens, they're more likely to stay around. Whereas if they pop into one of my videos and it's like, you only know what's going on if you've been watching me mm -hmm. and you've been watching all the other videos, and like, I don't get anything done, then why would you stay? That's interesting. It's like the same concept as like, people think if you have a viral video, like that's it, you're gonna go, you know, it, it's gonna be huge for your channel, but it can also be detrimental to your channel. Uh, there, in more ways than one, but you know, like I've had uh, one good video that went like viral, it was a crappy video now, like any video I watched from five years ago is terrible, like me on camera terrible, but whatever. <laughs> Um, about like all the cars I had. And it was cool that that one got like a million views, but I did one like a syrup as engine oil. And you know, it was like, it was fun, but it was just like a stupid video. And it's like, it got like a million and a half views. And now everyone who's seen that video, now when they see my channel pop up, you know, like YouTube pushes a, a new video of mine, they think of that video like, oh, I watched that stupid syrup as engine oil video. Like that was a stupid video. Like, I don't want to watch this guy. And they may never watch me again, even though they might have liked my content if they saw a normal video I make. You could delete that. I could. I mean, yeah, for sure. It's not. He's it's like, not no, really, it makes money. It's not really still getting views. Yeah. But it's just what I mean by that is like those million and a half people, like, I might have lost some of those people forever as never giving my channel a chance again because that was what they saw of my channel and that's what they are going to associate it with forever. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it, it's it's a good and a bad thing, you know what I mean? Like, if you go viral and get, like, a bunch of views with a video that's what you would do normally, like, how you would film videos normally, that's perfect, mm -hmm. you know? But if it's, like, outside of your norm, then people are either going to subscribe thinking that it's something that's not, and then they're going to be like, I don't like this guy's stuff, it's not what I thought it was, or they're going to be like, screw this guy, and they might have actually liked your normal content. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, to the good, hard-hitting questions. Uh oh Has YouTube changed your life to make you happier, do you think? Are you happier Oof. than you were five years ago? That's a good question. Are you more stressed out? Are you have more Definitely social? more stressed out. Yeah. Um, I, you know, and I try, I see people in, in all walks of life, like, they're always pushing for, like, the next thing, the next level, how to make more and more money. And, like, for me, like, I'm at the point where I have a truck, a trailer, shop, I can go drift, I can come do Drift Week. Like, I don't, I don't need any more. Like, I don't need a bigger house. I don't need fancier cars. Like, I don't <coughs> care to make any more money. It would be nice to be able to, like, rat hole that away for, like, when YouTube inevitably that well dries up, you know, mm -hmm. for, like, the security of that. 
But other than that, like, I don't care to, to push it any further. So, like, I'm happy with where I'm at, you know? Mm -hmm. But it is still stressful. I think about that sometimes, you know? Like, my life used to be, like, get off work and, like, oh, what am I going to do tonight? And it's like, no, like, every day is YouTube. Like, every day revolves around it. There's not a day that goes by that I don't work on filming mm -hmm. or just working on cars or going on a trip or editing. Like, there's not a single day where I just, like, like, what am I going to do today? Like, I'm going to go to the river. Like, I don't ever do that. I don't ever have time to do that. I was going to say, I find also with my job, because I kind of like, I'm not a YouTuber, but, I, you know, we both the car culture, right. entrepreneurs or whatever you want to say. I hate that word. We're self-employed. <laughs> let's say that. I like that. Word. I was going to say, uh, I work every single day as long as I'm not, like, with my baby or something like right. that. I am working. There's not any time, like I'll force myself to play a video game because Elden Ring came out and I like those. Uh, is that is that uh, Elder Scrolls? No, no, it's like Dark Souls. Anyways, it's not important. But um, I, was curious. I don't play Sim, I don't do anything, but I had to force myself to play that game. I played it, I beat it, and then you're like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. You know, you're like, and I couldn't play another game. Um, maybe I ride my bike or like, you know, I work out or something, but there's no hobbies. Right. There's nothing else. No. There's just working on Lone Star Drift and Drift Week, and that's it. And, like, with that, it's... it's so not, stressful. It's not... Yes. It's not just that there's nothing else. It's just that, like, you know, I'll see people be like, oh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do this weekend. I'm like, God, that must be nice. <laughs> like, to not know what you're going to do yeah. this weekend and, like, that feeling of, oh, it's the weekend, I'm off work, like... I'm sure like they can leave work and like it's done, it's over. You know, for us, it's like you're always thinking like an idea pops in your head. Oh, for this next drift week, you know, I should be, I should think about this and that. Like you just, you, it's really hard to shut your brain off for you too, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Like when it comes to that stuff. Um, so definitely more stressful in that sense. And I do think about that sometimes. Like, am I really happier now than I was? Like I have way more stuff and I get to do way cooler things but I have way more stress. And I would say I definitely am happier. Um, but it is, it, it, it all comes at a cost. And that's why people, I think people will see Adam or Cletus and they're like, oh, it must be nice, you know? Like, I wish, I do not envy either of them <laughs> at all, you know? Because like, you know, people will say like, that I'm the only one who works on my cars or whatever. But it's like, that's the easy part, you know, that the whole like running a business empire, like that's the hard stuff, you know? And mm -hmm. like, I, I don't know, somehow Cletus seems to be able to like, like that dude, I've seen him stressed out like certain times, like right around like a specific event he's hosting or something. But for the most part, he is not stressed out. He's probably less stressed out on a day-to-day -day basis than I am. I don't know how, but they have a lot more on their shoulders is my, my point, you know, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that extra for the extra I would get out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I feel like I'm at a happy place. I'm just, I'm inefficient a little bit. And so because of that, I have to work every day. If I could like work five days a week and get enough content out, but if I could work, if I could get the same amount out in five days that I do in seven, then I'd just be like sick. I get to post more content. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I try to post as often as I can. It's a never ending speeding up treadmill. Yep. Sped up treadmill, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. Whatever it is, it only gets faster yes. and only creates more stuff. And the more successful you are, the more you want to press on the gas pedal because you're like, like at you, your place right now, you should probably be like, well, I should really do t-shirts. I, I, really I, do I do sell merch, but it's just like... But I mean like focus on it, have right. drops constantly, right. the giveaway cars, right. all right. the stuff. But I never see, want like, to I do just a don't. Car. I don't care. I am gonna try to do one just because I have cars I want to sell, so I might as well <laughs> give one away. But um, I just like I don't want any more stress. Like I, I personally like what I like doing. I like driving, uh, and I like like being in my shop building stuff, specifically like fab stuff. Like I don't necessarily like working on cars. Like I like working on cars as a whole package. Mm -hmm. But obviously, there's things that working on cars like sucks. You know, mm -hmm. um, but. Like, I like fabricating stuff and wiring cars. Like, I've learned I like building race cars more than other stuff. Like, building, like, full-on race cars, that's what's, like, fun to me. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that's just, like, what I like doing. I like doing that. And then I go inside, I shower, eat dinner, and then I watch a good show on Netflix. That's, like, the only time I've been a I'm able to, like, disconnect. Yeah, like, is if I get really into a show, you know, it's, like, when I can kind of turn my brain off from everything else. 
or the value I'm only playing this, try to play the sim or do stuff like that, like I'm still like thinking about other things. So I should like, be filming this. That's my piece. I time. should be doing this. Yeah, yeah. Right, tomorrow I've got to order this part for the F80 because like, you know, it's leaving in, in a week and I need to overnight this part and then, you know, I've got to finish editing this video and then start on this video and then, so it's a lot, you know. Do you know what Mari Kondo is? <laughs> the thing where you like pick something up and wonder if it brings you joy and if it does, you keep it and if not, you get rid of it kind of thing. If you could like triage your life and get rid of some things, what would you get rid of? Or like just like with the YouTubing or anything. Uh, I would get rid of like the business side of things. Like mm -hmm. if I could just not have to deal with any of the, like, you know, people like in theory, I should treat what I do like a business. And I mean, I do, uh, but like, I don't like to think of it like that. I like doing it more for like the passion of it, the fun of it. Like I just like working on cars, sharing that with people. Um, so if I could get rid of like the whole business aspect, that would be so if that was just off the table, like taxes were just automatically done, like, you know, balance sheets and financing and all this stuff was just like, never had to touch it. Mm -hmm. And maybe editing, like I'm not, I don't hate editing as much as I used to because I've obviously gotten better at it doing like, I probably don't, I think, I don't know how many videos I've done, but it's probably like a thousand. Um, editing, I would get rid of editing too. If I could just like work in the shop and like just work on cars and go drive, that would be perfect for me. That would be great. How many employees do you have? None. None? No. Yeah, you could have an well, editor. Well, kind of. I have uh, my buddy Josue helps me, like, kind of, like, part-time. Like, he'll normally get to my house at, like, 3 and help me to, like, 8. And that's when I usually call it, like, 8 or 9. Um, and then his brother, Waldo, they're both, like, my best friends from when I was, like, they, it's kind of cool. Like, so they started drifting with me. Like, I started drifting. We were friends. Like, they went to the first events with me, and now it's, like, circle back now we all hang out again but anyway uh, they do the merch stuff for me but right. I, if i had a filmer slash editor i thought about this a lot if i had one of those people it'd be great if i could have someone just take over like the business finances aspect but it's like that's a lot of trust you know mm -hmm. like i don't i can't trust someone with like my personal stuff like that yeah but that's the stuff i don't want to do if you like hire someone to work on the cars for you I'm like, that's not what I, that's what I like doing <laughs> of all the things. I don't want to do more business stuff. Yeah. I want to work on the cars. So, but yeah, I should hire people and do that. But again, it goes back to that, like, I'm comfortable with where things are now and it works. So, like, kind of just keep doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Fast forward five years since we did the last one of these talks, maybe probably, probably at least four or five, four or years. five years ago. Where are you going to be in five years? Because, like, know. you've already gone so fast, so far. That is a good point. You know, like, I, when you said, like, how much has changed, I'm like, nothing's changed since then. And then like, you start yeah, listing no, things, crazy. I'm like, wow, a lot of things have changed. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. Because, like, stuff does change so fast. You know, I think back to two years ago, and it's, like, a completely different time period almost, it feels like. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. Are you going to base your, like, progress on, like, another YouTuber? Like, no, uh, have I, some Hoonigan compound or, like, no. Drift Games compound. Have you noticed, by the way, all these big YouTubers are getting compounds? Yeah, that's just... I mean, that would be... It'd be cool to have Even a compound Whistle and Diesel fun. or someone. You know, like, they right. bought land and, or, you know, like, their thing. Everybody's getting a compound and some big thing so they can, like, have a create creative space right, or right. whatever and do their thing. Yeah, I mean, that would be cool. But, like, again, it goes back to that, like... I'm good with where things are at, you know? Like, I don't mm -hmm. care to, like, have 50 employees and, you know, 20 grand a month, 30 grand a month in mortgages on this compound and, you know, like, all this overhead. And I'm just, I'm also not much of a risk taker financially, mm -hmm. you know? Because, like, I grew up, it's not that we were poor. You know, my dad, uh, he, I want to say he finished high school. He ended up getting a good job because he learned the ins and outs of the aircraft business. He was a quality insurance manager, whatever. Uh, point is like nobody, I never got handouts growing up. You know, like when I was 16, I had to have my own car insurance. I had to have my own phone plan. Like I had to pay for everything, you know? And I've never had anybody to fall back on financially. You know, like mm -hmm. I know a lot of friends where it's like, if they get into a jam, they can just be like, hey dad, you know, I need five grand to like pay for this thing and like, I don't have a single person like, I mean, maybe a friend. I'm sure I have friends that are, would do that for me. But my point is like, I don't have 
like any sort of fallback besides myself. Mm -hmm. So like I'm I'm cautious with my money. I like to have savings and I don't like to have a ton of overhead because mine, mm -hmm. it's like, well, if YouTube goes away tomorrow, I want to make sure I can still pay my mortgage with just a normal job. You know what I mean? No, I 100% agree. One of my rules has always been like, I should always be able to stop working for two years and like figure shit out right. and live my lifestyle and not have to freak out. And right. if that means, like when I was young, I only got to spend 300 bucks on rent, that's all you got to do. You know, right. like you right. didn't get to have a car loan, always had to right. earn everything. Same. Yeah. I don't do car loans or anything. So yeah, no, I totally get it. Yeah. Which is not this generation and not like the whole YouTube thing or anything. It's yeah, crazy. no, it's like that constant, you know, like, just roll it into the next one and like just keep trying to step it up and step it up. But you know, I, I really don't think that would do me any good anyway. Like my channel, like I think it just the, the, the audience is what attracts people to my channel is different than that, mm -hmm. I guess. It's like the detail and the technical details and stuff. So I don't, I don't know that it would even matter. You know, I don't know that it would like, I can't compete with those guys on like the same, same for same, you know what I mean? Like I'm just, I'm not an entertainer. Like I'm just like a dude who works on cars and I like to show yeah. people that, you know? So like you have to really like work like cars and want to learn about them. Otherwise I'm not going to be very interesting. So. I agree and I'm one of those people that can't like fake it. Yeah, um, I can't, I just can't do it. And do all that stuff. And I look at a lot of, I don't want to say anybody's faking it, but there's a lot of YouTubers that we know. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Now I sound like I'm throwing No, people shade. always think it, no, people think I'm throwing shade at random people yeah. and I'm like, man, I didn't even make that connection myself. Yeah, I'm not know? thinking that. I was thinking that a lot of these other people are putting on a really good act right. and being what like the flex culture whatever, like what people want. Right. They want to see crazy cars. They want to see crazy projects. They want to see crazy stuff. They want to be entertained. Entertained. And yeah. like someone boring like me is not necessarily entertaining. Right. I'm like around to help out like normal drivers or host events or like I'm not even really great for spectators most of the time. The bump. I know um, we're we're knee bumping. Yeah. We're a little too. Oh, we're good. We're good. I got, I'm, got a gap. I'm here for like, my YouTube channel was always just about like grassroots drifting and like right. my little experience with it and my drivers and like just fun stuff and kind of just like a little documentary of what we've been doing forever. But that's not what like, how do you say? That's not what the algorithms want. That's not what right. people click necessarily. It's not what like works forward. Yeah, you're never and gonna go become massive doing that. And like, I'm never gonna become massive doing things the way I do them. You are and though. I know that. You're already doing huge views. But like, comparatively, like I'll never be, I mean, I can't say that. If you double your views one more time, you're doing more than most of our big friend YouTubers. Yeah. You'd be one of, if you doubled one more time or two more times, which is totally feasible, You'd be one of the largest car YouTubers outside of like the truck guys and stuff like that, yeah. or like Cletus. That's true. Cletus does so well. His videos all get like a million views. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah, but like yours are in have. the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, but yours are at least one fifty. But they fluctuate. Aren't they? Yeah, the the vet building stuff like that era was all one fifty, like kind of minimum. But then it went down, <clears> and then it was like ninety to hundred was low. So like it fluctuates. Everyone's yeah. fluctuates, but. I mean, I guess I shouldn't say that because that guy I mentioned earlier who I watched and I was like, wow, I like the fact that these videos have started in and the Andrew Camerata guy. I mean, like, you would never think that kind of content. But, I mean, he, he has, like, I don't know. I mean, I haven't watched in years. But, um, you know, he had, like, 600,000 subscribers and, like, almost every video would get a million views. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what? You know, and it's, like, a two-hour-long video about a side-by-side. -side. <laughs> you're like... I guess there's just a, a lot of people out there that like this. So, like, I think there's enough people out there to like any sort of niche way you do things is, mm -hmm. I guess, what I'm trying to say. But, like, I don't care to try to do things the way everyone else does them. And I get a lot of flack for that. Not a lot. You know, that's the problem with YouTube and, and life in general is, especially when there's a comment section, because you'll read the comment section, and it's usually skewed towards, like, you'll see three people mention the same thing, and you're like, oh, everyone thinks this. And it's like, no, just the only three people who thought that are the ones who commented it. The other 100,000 didn't think that. Mm -hmm. It's easy to think there's a bigger problem than it is. But, like, people will say, you know, oh, you, you know, you're such a loner. Like, you don't do collabs and stuff. I'm like, I just don't, I don't, care. like, I'll go hang out with these people, these other YouTubers, and I won't even film it, you know? And we'll hang out and we'll talk, you know, for an hour. And, like, 
I, I'm not like I don't feel the need to film a clip and be like, oh, you know, I'm I'm here with Cletus, and but people will read between the lines and they're like, oh, you know, well, you were at the event, you didn't talk to this person, so you must hate them, and it's like, no, I just didn't. Like, I don't like doing that. I don't I don't like doing that. I don't yeah. I don't know. Um, but it's also because a lot of those guys are now my friends, you know. Um, but I don't know. I just don't really care to do. I just like want to be in my shop working on stuff or driving. Being in your shop working at stuff has got to be the best YouTube channel thing because you don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> it's true. You don't have to spend crazy money. Like, you do spend money, right. but it's not insane. It's controllable. Yeah. Like, you don't have flights canceled. You don't have yep. all this stuff. Yep. Some of these YouTubers have such crazy lives, and you're not losing so much time in the air. Yeah. I remember when you guys went to Japan with us. Uh, it's stressful losing like two days in the air to yeah. whatever you're doing each direction. You know, from jet lag and also being on a plane for right. 18 hours. Yeah, that was um, that was a long flight. I've mm -hmm. never taken a flight that long. I mean, that's my whole problem with FD because I always drive my own truck and trailer. And I'm like, if I wanted to do FD, like, I would have to have someone. Oh, are you announcing you're doing FD? No, I'm saying that's why I don't want to. And mm -hmm. like, it's not feasible for me. It's because I drive... He what? wants to do FD. I don't. I don't. I don't. That's why he built the turbo well, Corvette. People, there was no reason to build that see, unless people, you were doing FD. No, see, the Corvette snowballed. Uh, That's kind of what happened. Yeah. That original build plan was like lightweight NALS, like a, a makes sense grassroots competition car. That's not what it is. And then everyone's like, oh, well, it already has the turbo. Like, you should keep the turbo and just try it. And I was like, all right, fine. I'll try it. Mm -hmm. And then I went to start looking at the dry sump lines and I'm like the way they built this turbo kit you can't even hook lines up to the dry sump because the crossover goes right there so I was like I'll rebuild one header just simple and then I'll try it I probably won't like the turbo kit and then I ended up rebuilding the whole thing but it was really fun it was it's because I like the fab work if I didn't like doing fab work it would 100% have an NA motor in it but like I, I got I had an excuse to rebuild the turbo kit and like build headers and I'd I'd always wanted to build headers and I was excited about that so like I I really enjoyed that project, um, but it's like I know that it doesn't need that much power, you know and I think for most of what I do it would be more competitive with like an NA motor making like six fifty seven hundred but my other you're not competing against people though you're competing against YouTube. Might as well be 2,000 horsepower C8 Corvette true. in five years. I guess that's true, too. But I, I didn't think about it that way, but I think that probably did help. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that it was crazy, whereas if it was just like another NALS, it wouldn't have been as exciting. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, I mean, you always base some of what you do around that. You know, like, there's certain things that I'd like to build, but I'm like, ah, eh, nobody would really want to watch that. Mm -hmm. Which, like, I just can't justify it. You know what I mean? Like, there's certain things I'd like to go do, but I'm like, I can't really you make a video that, on that. You think that, then there's those channels like Grind Hard Plumbing, if you know what I mean, and you could build any crazy thing right. you want. Right, I agree. You could build a lawnmower, dune buggy, and people are yeah. going to watch it. Yeah, no, that's true, too. But I just mean, like, let's say there's, like, three different cars. You're like, oh, I'd like to build one of these three cars next. Mm -hmm. Right? You're going to pick the one that is most likely people are going to want to watch. You know what I mean? So, but... Uh, I don't know. I try not to base things off that. So I, that's not why I did it, um, was the point. But my logic was, with an NA, with like a, a 600 plus, 650 horsepower NALS, like it's honestly more maintenance than my car. Because mm -hmm. now you've got solid lifters, you've got to adjust the valves, you've got to do all this stuff. And like sending a, an LS to 8,000 RPM is probably more strain on it than mine revving to 6,800 on five, eight pounds of boost. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can just re-gear it to where 6,800 is enough because it makes power from 3,000 on. So that was kind of my logic was that, like, a built motor for turbo with a turbo and low boost is probably less stressed than, like, a 650 horsepower NA motor that you're sending to, like, 7,800 RPM. So I just don't like having to work on my stuff at the track. I, as much as I like working on cars, I do not like working on my cars at the track. I understand. I do everything I can in the shop to avoid working on cars at the track. That's my thing. <laughs> I understand. My V8 car, we literally just put gas in and go. Yeah. It's amazing. That's how my Miata is. I remember one, like, there was just the last comp I drove at it. I'm like, I literally didn't open the hood the entire comp weekend. Yeah. Like, to even check, like, nothing. That's how that car is. The Miata, the VET, the last time we drove it at the, the LZ thing, I never took the hood off it. I think I did this show Luke the Motor, and that was it. 
but like I didn't take the hood off it to do anything. We haven't had to do anything to that car. You know, something cool about that car is like it intimidates everybody else in grid. I don't know if you realize that. I could see a bunch of people like looking at it and talking about really? it. Like, oh, I hope I don't have to go against that thing. <laughs> I'm like, we're on a skid pad, guys. On a skid pad. It doesn't matter with, whatsoever. With a 400 treadwear tire. Yeah. That's the other thing that's tough about drifting is like you get, there's a lot of people that don't necessarily understand how all, how it all works. Like we're drift nerds. Like, you mm -hmm. know, we're, and like, so to us, all this stuff's like standard. But, you know, like there were so many people uh, after that weekend that like, or before it, whatever, that didn't understand that, like, a thousand horsepower, whatever horsepower, horsepower is only useful if you have the grip to back it up. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if you put a 195 tire on a car with 7,000 horsepower, it's, it's not going to go any, it's going to be way slower than a 200 horsepower car on a 265, you know what I mean? But people mm -hmm. don't necessarily, that's an extreme way to explain that, but, like, people don't necessarily understand that. They think power is everything. They're like, well, that car has more power, so it'll be faster. And as you know, power is so... Power is like the, the smallest denominator in whether a car is fast or not. You know, the tire, the suspension setup, like... And then you just have to have enough power to overcome that grip. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But you've seen it plenty of times. There's, like, dudes at 800 horsepower, and their car is, like, super slow. And then there's guys at, like, 450, and their car is rocket ship. Mm-hmm. So it's just people don't understand that, and it's hard to try to, like, explain that to people. So because of that, they think the vet, like, anywhere it goes is just going to be a killer. But it's like, if we have a two, if I take it to a class with a 235 tire rule, it's going to be slow because it's heavy. Like, in that... In That's it, when you take your Miata. Yeah. But then it's like, <laughs> but it's like, I already have this crazy car. I'd rather take the crazy car. If I'm going to take a car, I might as well take the one with the... <coughs> if it has a 235 class thing, you just run dually in the back. Because they never state you can only have two rear That's wheels. That's true. That's true. You'll actually have to change all the rule books. Right. Um, all right. Anything else you want to talk about before you get get off? Man, like I said, I feel like I'm sure I'll think of a good topic as soon as we uh, we end this out. I feel like you got to have something else in there. What else? You got anything else for me? The very last thing I was just kind of thinking about in my brain is a lot of you guys are getting very influential. Like I don't know if I know you probably don't think about that very much. I don't. You're very down to earth. But you've seen it with Adam. You've seen it with a lot of these people. You're getting to the point where you're very influential. And whether you're nice to kids in the pits or give mm -hmm. people time of day, um, you know, you can really oh, that's make... That's a good topic. We can you can really make people's, you know, day or ruin their day. You can really ruin them by building the wrong car or, like, telling them to build the wrong car. Like, if you were yeah, to build a rotary yeah. Corvette, people right. would copy that, and it would be terrible. Or simply making, like, public appearances and getting people out. Um, I've been bugging you recently to come to yeah. some Lone Star Drift events because attendance at some events is going down. Like even at the Invitational, you saw attendance going down. Mm -hmm. Clutch kickers just shot down. Um, if we want drifting to be on the rise, we really probably have to proactively do something about it. Because I've always been bad at, I guess, having a good spectator experience. I'm always about the drivers. Right, right. And um, having your favorite YouTuber at an event or like Nakamura out here, it was a normal day at Honda Musselman. Nothing crazy was going on, but their favorite person was there. And there was people flying in from out of state to spectate. And like they got ride-alongs. They had the best time in their life. I don't know if you saw, like I'm, someone made a post, like they got to drive in Nakamura and everything. They're mm -hmm. like, best day of my life. <laughs> if you saw that post on my uh -huh. Instagram. I can show it to you. But anyways, like uh, you're creating experiences for people that they want instead of just like the exact same drift event again. Right. Dave Egan in an interview, did a great job he's like saying i have to have something to sell and like it's always just been come to the drift of it come to the drift right. of it come to the drift of it drifting. yeah it's always the exact same thing but if you have like come see this person and come to the drift in and bend and have your mind blown or like do this or that come see this specific car everyone wants to see come right. see the japanese driver and you know naoki nakamura doing backwards entries against james dean or like whatever you can do to get people excited that's kind of what the sport needs right now because as you go around grassroots drifting in the United States, it's very like... I feel like there's a lot of drivers. At least around us, there's, it seems like there's more people into it than ever as far as driving is concerned. But there's probably less spectators than ever. You know, like when I started drifting in 2011, uh, we had CFRC. 
Uh, so I don't... Yeah, I drove there. Okay, probably right. Or I went and hung out with Chelsea with his E46. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we had CFRC, and when when I started, it was it was just like a straight skid pad, but then they made it like the P, and Mm -hmm. like it was in a industrial park in Orlando, so it was good proximity. And I mean, you know, those events like the driving was terrible. Like tandem back then, you know, was like this far apart, like Mm -hmm. tandem, and like we would fill the crowds like two three thousand people would show up you know and then it kind of died and then it's come back but like i could see where you mean where the 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 spectators are down Mm -hmm. a bit because it's not a great spectator experience like i don't really tell people to come to events like friends of mine or like my neighbors because i'm like you know if you're not into it it might be pretty (coughs) boring you're just gonna stand around especially comps especially comps because there's so much downtime you know with comps with the but protests and the five minute calls and all this, like it's just like yeah. it's agonizing when you're into it or when you're there driving and you're like, man, to just be sitting there like watching this, like this is rough. It mm-hmm. needs to be more I feel like competitions need to shift more towards being a show first and foremost and being kind of a competition second. You know what I mean? Like like you said, like take out five minute calls, you know, take out I deleted qualifying. Yep, that's Forever great. Ago. Qualifying I so do whatever stupid. I can because if I hate it, everybody's going to hate it. Exactly, because we're nerds. We're yeah. drift nerds. We love, we live, eat, and breathe drifting. So like, if it's boring to us, it's going to be boring to anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that that's a good point. I was going to say, th- I think that going forward, um, you're already doing your part being influential on YouTube and everything and getting people into the builds and getting people passionate, buying parts, you know, helping companies out and everything. I think that going forward, we need to do a better job. And that one of the reasons I think why there's not huge spectator counts is also drifting is oversaturated at the moment. I don't know if it's that yeah. way in Florida. There are no. so many events. Yes, um, I know. Yes, I would say yes. Just because, like, there's so many events that I don't even know are happening until someone's like, oh, you're driving this event, like, tomorrow? And yeah. And I'm like, what? I, I don't even, know about I stuff all the time. I didn't even know there was an event tomorrow. And that's also maybe, like, it used to be easy There'd be forums and there'd be stickies, you know, at the top of the forums, and you'd know everything. It was, it, things didn't move so fast. Right now on social media, it's just like, yeah. And you're getting flooded with stuff from across the country. You know, like right. you don't really know what's going on necessarily. But yeah, I think that's a, a big thing going forward in the near future and stuff, is us doing a better job. I guess pushing. I don't want to say the sport right. forward because that sounds silly. But you're influential, and I'm around a lot of influential people, and just like keeping things going. Just like you said, I don't feel influential. You are though. I know it is cool, and some, sometimes you are those shadow are like, legends, oh, I built, guys. I built this car. You know, I, I was like, send me a picture of their yeah. LS Miata finish, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. They built an LS Miata. It's probably why they follow me because they built an LS Miata. They're like, yeah. no, I built the LS Miata because of your LS Miata. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes it hits It's me. a replica. Yeah, not so much a replica, but yeah, kind of. Think but, about it just as simply as how many of those Shadow of Legends games you could sell that they would pay you X amount of money just to talk about it in your right. video. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. A good, that's a good point. But at least but I don't ever do those for the record. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I used sure. to, back when I was like, when I was first starting, I did, mm-hmm. but now I won't do it. Like, I just won't. You're too rich. Tell me you're rich without telling nah. me you're rich. See. I don't need to sell I, I, I It would be games. nice. It would be nice. But I'm, I'm to the point now where, in my opinion, like, even if they paid me, they would have to pay me an obscene amount of money for me to feel like it didn't damage my audience for more than they paid me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like every time you do one of those, you're going to lose, like, a thousand people. <laughs> they're just going to stop watching you because they're like... <laughs> I didn't even think about this that. This guy's a phony. Like, he's... This is a sellout. Like, in, like, a phone game... Like, come on. Have like, you sold an NFT yet to anybody? Nope. Yet? Okay. No, I don't do those either. That's the big I thing. I get those, too, and I don't do those. I won't do it. I won't do that stuff because it's fake, and, like, you know it's fake. And, like, mm-hmm. the only people who aren't going to know that, like, you don't care about that game and play it are the people that they're trying to prey upon and like that's unfair to exploit them so anyway i won't i won't do this i only do stuff that like i know that i actually use like athletic greens i do like the hella fresh the factor like stuff that's legitimate like worthwhile you Mm -hmm. know what i mean um which great fortunately i can do -hmm. that you know it would be nice to have a brand deal in every video um but it's like I also value my audience more than that. I don't want them to have to sit through like me talking about an ad for two minutes every single video. 
Or just do it enough to pay the bills and we're good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going to have a Drift GT3 next. No. No, I have two F80 M3s, but that's ridiculous. Hey, but I bought them both cheap. Like, you have more than $70,000 in those. Yes. You have more than $80,000 in them. Probably, yeah, maybe a tiny bit. With sales tax and insurance, you have yeah. more than $90,000 in them. If you count the parts. On, yeah, and um, you count the parts. If you count the parts, then yes. You have more than $90,000 in them. What? No, less than ninety. dollars Okay, but I'm just saying. That is a lot of money. I get it. You, I get no, it. I'm just saying you could do a Ferrari. You yes. could be the dickhead driving around at OSW in a drift Ferrari. But also, I have as much 90. into two my two F80s as one G80 costs. If someone were to go buy a new M3. You're doing some stupid drifter speak. It doesn't matter. No <laughs> one needs two F80 M3s. <laughs> yes, like, they do. You're like, I needed an automatic one and a manual. Well, that wasn't on purpose. I got the automatic one first, and I was like, this is the best car ever. I want to get another one. Mm -hmm. Next, you're going to be like, well, now I need a white one. I have a white one. Oh, my in, other in one's manual. White. Yeah. Just dumb shit. No. But no, the point is, is you could, if you extrapolate out a few years, be doing crazy shit. All right. I think we've talked long enough. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was fun. He finally is on Drift Week. I know. Uh, it's, this has been a long time coming. Tomorrow's Apple Valley again. Oh, have you driven any of these tracks, by the way? No, I've never driven so that's on the perfect. West Coast at all. It's the point of Drift Week is to do all these tracks back to back. Bucket you're list on your tracks. You're on your third bucket list track yep. in basically the first week, and you still have more to go. Yep. Um, Horse Thief was insane. Yes. That was an amazing track. And this one is too. This one's like, the whole track is so fun. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. The first lap I did, I'm like, how does this thing keep going? I thought I was lost. <laughs> I'm like, there's still more turns. On Horse Thief? No, at this one. Oh, at Grange. Because you just keep Apple going Island. back. Like, yeah. it's, it's a great track. And then no, Horse really... Thief is, like, just so fun. Like, I feel like Willow Springs is, like, the U.S. Ebisu. Yeah, I know, because all you're going to do is that one track. <laughs> True. Yeah. There's not like a bunch of stuff hiding there for you that yeah, you're going to do. Yeah, true. But it's Summit just kind of the way kind of it's is, laid though. out. That's what I was thinking, too. That seems like Summit that. Point is rad. I want to go back to Japan soon. Have you been back? We're going back in April. I need to buy those tickets before that's, I go I was going to say that's very soon. You know yep, I mean? April. I'm very bad at committing to things. I'm very indecisive. Oh, no, really? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. By Drift Week 7. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm very bad at committing to things. Like today, I think three times I was like, yep, I'm out of tires. I'm not drifting anymore. And then I was like, I'm going back out for two more laps. Are you not out of tires on the whole trip? No, no, no. Like just you mean for the, the day. Car. I was like going to change them. And then I was like, oh, but like it's late. And then I like three different times I was like, yeah. they got some more in them. That's just, I'm indecisive. I do that. I know. I hate committing to things super far out because then it's like, I feel like every time I do, like something pops up that I, like, I can't not do or something. I don't know. I'm just indecisive. Yeah. It's probably just why you have no only fan girl. That's, I guess so. Couldn't commit to her. I have a girlfriend. Is she on OnlyFans? No. <laughs> Not yet. No, she would never. Not yet. All right. Cut. Good job. That's fine. Thank you. We're, not, we're still rolling. Let's go to bed. And Drift Week 7 is brought to you by Just Racing. They have a very fancy machine shop and build very fancy racing engines. Thank you to BC Racing Custom Coilovers for always supporting everything Lone Star Drift and Drift Week does. What Monsters Do, who also has a new logo over on the right. Thank you so much. Go over to their website, buy some merch. Discount code EBISU. Thank you to Vape Tasia for supporting drifting for quite some time, including Forrest Wang and all kinds of other cool stuff. NK Wheels, Volino Tires, and heat wave visual thank you very much thank you audience bye